Brothers and sisters, we welcome you to the branch and district council leadership training of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Vigan District. Elder Maximo Saavedra, Jr. of the Philippines Area 70 will, pre will preside this conference virtually as he asked me to conduct. We express and extend our love and greetings to those who are joining us via virtual and through the Facebook portal of the vegan district. We fondly hope that the link portal provided is shared with you by your respective unit leaders, organization leaders, and your ministering brothers and sisters. We acknowledge the presence of our loved mission president by a virtual, President Mark Marvin Peterson and his wife, Sister Kathleen Jensen Peterson. We begin this session by singing hymn number 259, Hope of Israel, as we are accompanied by a recorded hymn, Pile of the Tabernacle Choir. After the opening hymn, Brother Derek Spencer Lunes, the Vegan District Executive Secretary, will offer us the opening prayer. After the opening prayer, we are happy to listen to the leadership training facilitated by Elder Maximo Saavedra Jr of the Philippine Area 70 by playing the linking arm videos and after which Brother Ronald Florendo, a vegan first branch, Elder Scoro, and Sister Rose Tugade, vegan first branch, Relief Society President, and President Elmo Ruiz, vegan second branch president, will give it give us the truth about the linking arm video. And after which President Mark Marvin Peterson, Lawag Mission President, will give us message to be followed by Elder Maximo Saavedra of the Philippine Area 70.
Our loving Gracious Heavenly Father, maraming salamat sa opportunity na ito na binigay niyo sa amin at sa mga means na um, binigay niyo sa amin to have our district conference virtually. Maraming salamat sa mga leaders and members na sumuporta at tumulong to make it uh, possible. Ama, um, hinihiling namin sa araw na ito na i-bless niyo po yung bawat isa po sa amin na ma-bless po kami through Holy Ghost na mas maintindihan po namin yung mga messages, instructions sa amin mga leaders to help us na maging disciple po ninyo at maging better na um, member ng inyong simbahan. At yun ang rinama, i-bless niyo po yung bawat isa po sa amin na through this um, session ay mabigyan po kami ng burning desire at ganoon rin na mag-push sa amin to serve others at ganoon rin na ma-extend po namin yung care and love sa lahat ng mga members na nangangailangan. I-bless niyo po yung mga leaders po namin spiritually that they may be able to deliver their messages um, straightly to our hearts and mind na tumulong sa amin to strengthen their testimony and faith. Ama, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pagmamahal at pag-uunawa sa amin. At uh, ito lang ang aming panalangin sa pangalan ng Yeso Cristo. Amen. This video has been created to provide specific direction to implement the apostolic charge to members and missionaries in the Philippines to link arms in the gathering of Israel among part member families. The Philippines area is the only area in the world with this sacred charge. Why is that? We are among the fastest growing areas in the world in convert baptisms, yet the Philippines has a high percentage of part member families. Understanding this, we feel the Lord's prompting to go forward with obedience to link our faithful members with our hard-working full-time missionaries in the work of the ministry. That effort is accomplished by assignment, using the following video as a guide. President Russell M. Nelson has declared that the gathering of Israel is the most important work taking place in our day. In the spirit of President Nelson's prophetic counsel and under the direction of the Quorum of Twelve Apostles, the Philippines Area Presidency introduced a heightened effort whereby ministering brothers and sisters on the one hand and full-time missionaries on the other will more perfectly unite their efforts to gather scattered Israel from among part member families. Since the time we sustained President Nelson as the President of the Church and as prophet, seer, and revelator to the world, we have repeatedly seen by his example the power that linking arms with our fellow men can have. Images depicting President Nelson linking arms inspires us to more effectively link our arms as disciples of Jesus Christ in sharing the good news of his gospel with others. Here is how it works. The area presidency met with all Area 70 and mission presidents throughout the Philippines and extended a commission to meet with, train, and motivate stake and district presidents in their respective coordinating councils regarding members and missionaries linking arms and ministering to part member families. In turn, stake and district presidents have been given a charge to meet with and train bishops and branch presidents who will do the same among their respective Relief Society and Elders Quorum presidents. Let's visit a meeting between a bishop and his Elders Quorum and Relief Society president to see how this process looks in action. President Gaer and Sister Alferes, it is so nice to meet with you today. As you know, we are in the process of implementing the apostolic charge for our ministering brothers and our ministering sisters to link arms with the full-time missionaries assigned to our ward. To fulfill this great stewardship, I would like to give you a list of the part member families in our ward. Will you please review this list with your counselors? and prayerfully consider the ministering brothers and sisters that you could assign to be companions with our full-time missionaries to minister to these individual families? Will you then meet with the ministering brothers and sisters along with the missionaries to make these ministering companionship assignments? 
Thank you, Bishop. We would love to do this, and we have already spoken of how this could be organized in the Relief Society. How many companionships may we have? That's a great question. I want you to follow your inspiration, but you may create as many companionships as needed to reach all of the part member families. This will be a great finding opportunity for our missionaries, especially during this time of pandemic. They have the time and the approval of their mission president to provide great support to our ministering brothers and sisters. I'm excited to start this great effort in the Elders Quorum. How often will the missionaries accompany their ministering brothers on these ministering visits? Please help the ministering brothers and sisters understand that this does not change the frequency of ministering we have been taught by President Nelson. Ministering should continue to occur regularly and as often as will be helpful to the families. Help your companionship understand that while we're in this pandemic, in-person visits may be difficult. Our missionaries are wonderfully trained to schedule appointments, organize group chats, messenger visits, and other forms of virtual meetings so that the ministry can go forward in a personal, loving, caring, and consistent way even over the internet. Virtual ministering has been a great blessing throughout the Philippines ever since we went into lockdown in March. That's a view from the member's side. Now let's look in on how this process looks from the missionary side. Here, a mission president meets with his missionaries to discuss linking arms in the ministry to part member families. Elders and sisters, what a great blessing it is in the Philippines area to have received an assignment from the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. You, as full-time missionaries, will serve as companions with the ministering brothers and sisters in the work of gathering Israel. Soon, you'll be contacted by the Elders Quorum or Relief Society President in the unit where you serve. You will be invited to a meeting with members of the Elders Quorum or Relief Society Presidency, where you'll be given assignments to serve as companions to the ministering brothers and sisters to visit and minister to part member families. When you receive this assignment, please know I have linked my arms with the stake president and thereby united the priesthood keys we hold to empower this great work in the ministry. You may receive many assignments. With every assignment you receive, please remember this is a great blessing and finding opportunity as you bring the gospel to these part member families. President, we are so excited about these assignments. Several weeks ago, a member of the area presidency met with all of the stake and district presidents in our mission and asked them to re-energize linking of arms in their stakes and districts. Within just a few weeks, we were invited to meet with the Real Society President and a few different ministering sister companionships. And we receive assignments to minister to seven different part member families. A few days later, we met with the Elders Quorum President and received four more assignments to be companions with the ministering brother companionships. We are already teaching the gospel in several of these homes. Wow, this is such a blessing. After Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidencies meet with their bishop or branch president, they then review a list of part member families and prayerfully consider which ministering brothers and which ministering sisters to assign as companions to full-time missionaries. Let's now watch this process unfold as we observe an Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidency meeting. Brethren, I enjoyed a wonderful meeting with Bishop Marshallis and Sister Alferez the other day and was instructed that we should move forward to make assignments for our ministering brothers to be companions with our full-time missionaries. These companionships will visit and minister to the needs of part member families in our ward. Bishop Marshallis gave me this list of part member families. I'd like to review it with you to determine the names of a few companionships and families to start with. I thought it might be good for us to start first with five to seven families, and then we will make further assignments as our Elders Quorum members and the missionaries 
embraces apostolic charge. President Gaer is meeting with his counselors, and I am meeting with you to make ministering assignments. We will create companionships of our Relief Society sisters with our full-time missionaries. When we are finished, we will invite companionships of sisters and the full-time missionaries to a meeting. There we will give them their assignments to minister to part member families. Since we only have full-time elders in our ward, we will still make the assignments for them and the sisters from the Relief Society, but they will not travel with our sisters to and from the appointments. During the pandemic, they will meet online to provide ministering support. On those occasions when they can gather at the homes of the part member families, they will just meet our Relief Society sisters at the home for their visit. Let's review the list and prayerfully make some assignments. Once the assignments have been determined, members of the elders and Relief Society presidencies then meet with ministering brother and sister companionships to link their arms together with the full-time missionaries. The ministering assignment is extended and they are asked to serve together as a companionship. Now, let's watch this process as we first look in on an elders quorum president making these inspired assignments. That will be followed by a Relief Society president who has already made the assignment but now follows up with additional training. Brother Tadeo and Brother Filomiano, I am so glad to meet with you today and so happy that we have our full-time missionaries with us. Brethren, we are grateful for your faithful service and want you to know we love you very much. I know you have all heard about the exciting apostolic charge we have received in the Philippines to link companionships of ministering brothers with companionships of full-time missionaries. I have invited the four of you here today to give you an assignment that will create a companionship among you. The Elders Quorum Presidency has prayerfully considered a list of a few families to provide to you as your first ministering assignments. These are part member families in our ward who very much need the blessing of your ministering and your ability to care for their family and teach the gospel. Please, now work together as companionship to prayerfully look for ways to minister to these families as you strive to invite them to come unto Christ. President Geyer, I'm grateful to receive this assignment. I know two of the three families you have given to us, and of course, I love these full-time missionaries. The four of us will have a meeting soon to counsel together and discuss what we know about the families, and then we will contact them and begin ministering to them. Thank you so much. It's a blessing to have this linking of arms assignment. Sisters and elders, as we have discussed, the Relief Society Presidency feels that your ability to minister to these part member families will be a great blessing in their lives. Thank you for accepting these assignments. We know that as you work together to make appointments, and as you pray for and care for the needs of each family, they will be blessed to feel the Lord's love, and hopefully, one day, we will see these families receive their temple blessings with the hope of being together for eternity. Elders, I want you to understand that your role will be slightly different from the role of ministering sisters and ministering brothers from the Elders' Quorum. In this situation, it is important for you to let the ministering sisters take the lead with their assignments. Please always obey mission rules. Never travel to and from appointments with the sisters. When we come out of the pandemic and you're able to gather at the part member family homes, you should travel separately and meet at the home. Until that time, you will be a great support and strength to the ministering sisters as you help them to organize meetings over the internet through messenger or other internet methods that you are familiar with. We are grateful to have your wonderful training as a missionary with technology and virtual ministering. My dear brothers and sisters, in this process, remember that missionary companionships should never be divided. They must always remain as a companionship. While members are assigned to minister only to a few, missionaries have much greater capacity to receive assignments to visit many homes of part member families and can work with many ministering brother and sister companionships. We feel that heightened missionary exposure to healthy, meaningful relationships with part member families, as directed by inspired leadership, 
will serve to bolster their success as disciples of Jesus Christ, while at the same time assisting members in the Philippines to grow spiritually and mature in skills and abilities necessary to be effective ministers. In the face of this worldwide pandemic, which has prevented the usual church gatherings and disrupted regular proselyting activities, our missionaries have adapted by learning to use smartphones and utilizing various social media platforms. These new methods of doing missionary work have been most successful when the investigators who are taught, converted, and baptized are either referred by members or were fellowshipped by members throughout the entire process. Linking of arms in the ministry to part member families will unfold miracles as this fellowshipping ministry of love moves forward among us. The prayer of our area presidency is that all members of the church in the Philippines may be washed over by a sense of the Holy Spirit's confirming witness that this linking of the arms is the Lord's and that he will sustain and magnify our united efforts. This will not only bless the lives of part member families and our ministering brothers and sisters, it will bless our full-time missionaries in fulfilling their missionary purpose to bring souls unto Christ. We so testify in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Napakagandang malaman na ang ating bansang Pilipinas ay isa sa mga pinakamabilis tumaas ang convert sa buong mundo. Gayunpaman, karamihan pa rin sa ating mga converts o ang kanilang mga pamilya ay hindi pa lubos ang member ng simbahan. Kaya nga, ang ating mga leaders sa Philippine Area Mission ay nagbigay ng directive upang magtulungan ang mga missionaries or full-time missionaries kasama ang organization ng Relief Society at Elders Quorum. Ito ay ang directive na linking arms o kapit bisig ng mga missionary, Elders Quorum at Relief Society organization. Sa ganitong paraan, sa mga companionship ng Relief Society at ng Elders Quorum, sa bawat organisasyon ay magbibigay sila ng mga families o mag-assign sila sa bawat companion ng mga family o ng mga pamilya na may mga part-time members. At doon ay kasama nila ang mga full-time missionaries na turuan ang mga hindi pa membro ng bawat pamilya. So sa ganitong paraan, mas madali ang magiging referral para sa mga missionary. At gayon din sa part ng mga members na may mga non-members pa. So, sa ganitong paraan, mas madali nilang introduce yung gospel sa kanila. Sa mga pagkakataon naman ng mga tuturuan ay mga kalalakihan. So, ang dapat na magturo sa kanila ay mga elders. Pero ang naka-assign doon ay uh, family ng mga Relief Society. So, ang pwedeng gawin dito habang tinuturuan sila ay pwedeng uh, mag-video mag chat ang mga sisters. Gayon din sa mga uh, sisters. Kung may tinuturuan sila na mga kalalakihan na referral o mga non-member ng Elder Scorum, pwede silang mag-video chat kasi hindi pwedeng magsama ang mga uh, elders at sisters missionary. So yung linking arms, ang ultimate goal po natin dito ay 
mas lalo pang pataasin ang, ang convert sa ating bansa. At uh, lahat ng mga family na may mga member ay maturuan at sila, na rin, at sila rin ay abinyagan o makonvert sa ating simbahan. Ito po ay napakagandang paraan upang mas lalo pang maging effective ang pagtuturo at paghikayat sa mga hindi pa member. At alam ko na ang directive na ito ng ating mga area leaders, Philippine area leaders ay malaking tulong upang mas lalo pang mapalaki ang Israel. At alam ko ang ito ay totoo. Iniiwan ko sa pangalan Jesus Christ. Amen. Last February 2020, the Philippines Area Presidency released an official message to be cascaded to all members of the Church in our country regarding combined missionary work and ministering efforts between the members and the missionaries. However, there is something unique about this invitation. The focus of missionary work and ministering efforts this time would be the part member families or families home not all household members are baptized in the church. If we try to analyze the timing of this message and the time we are in right now, it is meaningful to ponder that the area presidency sent out this message last February 2020, a month way before COVID-19 pandemic was officially declared and simultaneous nationwide lockdowns were implemented. I could only think that our leaders were inspired that at some point we will come to be to a trying difficult time wherein even the Lord's era of ministering and missionary work will be restricted and challenging to do. However, it is in these trying times that even if the circumstances indeed have changed, the message and invitations remain the same and true. The, Lord, the Lord's work must go on. Elder Van Jerter said in his message, The vision of ministering is that each member, missionary, and leader will minister to all true personal, meaningful invitations and service. Our prayer is that all members of the Church in the Philippines may be washed over by a sense of the Holy Spirit's confirming witness that this linking of the arms in the Lord's direction, if we will unitedly act in a concerted manner, the Lord will sustain and magnify our efforts. The area presidency invites us to heed to their inspiration and convert our stakes, districts, wards, and branches like unto Zion, that of becoming of one mind, one heart in this great effort. There is no better time to be united in our goals to share the gospel, bring that low ship back to his fold, and extend the invitation to repent and take upon the name of Christ than the time we have right now. Now is the best time to heighten missionary and ministering efforts because all people, no exceptions, are in great need to feel the love of Christ. There is in this saying that goes, it is better to light a single candle than stumble in the dark. My message to those members whose family members are not yet baptized in these streets is that no effort is too little and no effort is completely worthless to a sincere soul who wants to share the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is better that your simple efforts of doing acts of service Expressing love of being good examples to your non-member families serve as their light than doing nothing at all and letting them stumble in the dark. Do not give up just yet. The Lord in His own time will make a way to fulfill the innermost desires of your heart. That of wanting to be sealed for time and eternity with the people in your life who matters most, just listen to this invitation to go on ministering and helping out the missionaries in their work and continue having faith that miracles do happen every day. Even the hardest of hearts will soften 
up when the gospel takes its full root within it. I testify, brothers and sisters, that our Father in heaven is always mindful of our circumstances. He knows us, He loves us, and He lives among us. And I share this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, brothers and sisters of Vegan District. Surely it is a unique experience and a unique district conference we are having right now. I'm happy that uh, I will be able to share and express my love to each of you. And uh, with that, I'm very happy and uh, privileged to share my testimony about the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Amos chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. We have witnessed a lot of revelations are being fulfilled at this point of time and uh, at this very moment. And I enjoy that. Even me, I'm very excited what will about to happen for the next years or months or so. Right now, in our district, or even the whole Philippines, we have the opportunity to link arms with our full-time missionaries assigned in our areas. And these full-time missionaries who labored with love and uh, guided by the Spirit of the Lord will work with members of the branches, especially in this district. And what a wonderful time to spend with them to plan and to act. And this time, we have been counseled to focus on part-time members and to link arms with the full-time missionaries to work with them so that each family will become members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As we all know, we will be exalted together with our families in the next life. If we do our job and work together, as our prophets have been counseled us and uh, instructed us, uh, may I share to you my testimony? that if we're going to link arms with the full-time missionaries, involving our ministering brothers and sisters to work hand-in-hand, hand, to plan it well, and to labor with love, and ask for the guidance of the Spirit, I can assure you that it will all, it's going to happen, and we will all be blessed, as promised by our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, that if we work together, as we work one hand in hand, as we go on and move forward with the goals and needs to achieve, we will be blessed individually and also as family and eventually as a unit. So I share to you my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. It's good to be with you, even by virtual means. Oh, how we would love to be there in person and feel of your great spirit. We love the saints of the vegan district. I first want to tell you Merry Christmas and to wish you a very, very happy and wonderful time as you worship the Lord Jesus Christ. I testify that if you put your faith and trust in him, that he will never let you down. He will be there for you. Part of the leadership session today, we are asked to talk about linking arms. Linking arms between missionaries and members. And to do this, the area presidency has asked us to make assignments with ministering brothers and sisters, teaming up with full-time missionaries to visit the part member families. So, we are ready to be your companions. Two full-time sister missionaries and two Relief Society sisters from the branch can now join together and form a team to go and visit part member families. Also, two full-time elders and two priesthood holders from the branch can also form a team 
to go and visit part member families. That is the plan. So branch presidents, elders quorum presidents, and Relief Society presidents, please pick out part member families in your branch that you can now team with your ministering brothers and sisters and the full-time missionaries to go and visit them. This is the plan. This is the new plan, and it is the way we will link arms together and accomplish the Lord's purposes to gather scattered Israel and find the lost sheep that he has prepared. So we hope to be your teams, your teammates in doing this great work. Back in April, we submitted the application for vegan to become a steak. As part of the application, a district must be tithing worthy. And at the time, the vegan district was qualified. Usually, we would hear something back in about three weeks, but now it has been seven months. What happened? Well, I think you won't be surprised that COVID happened and it has delayed the application until January or February of 2021. I think that our current tithing worthiness as of December 31st of this year, will also be important now. They will look at that so that our application can still be approved. And I'm worried because of the pandemic and how it has affected um, our tithing, pay, tithing worthiness in vegan district. Oh, I'm not worried about pandemics because I know the Lord is stronger than those. He can defeat any pandemic or any kind of trials. But what he cannot help us do is he cannot give us faith. We have to have that faith, faith in him, faith that he will live up to his promises. It is the difference between being a district and a stake. It is the faith of the members and faith to pay tithing because Tithing is one of the best ways that we demonstrate our faith in our Heavenly Father and His promises. The Lord has said, If men come unto me in their weakness and have faith in me, then I will make weak things become strong unto them. And I believe the Lord when He says this. If you are only a part tithe payer, it's not too late to make your tithing a full tithe by the end of the year. You still have three weeks to get with your branch president. It's not too late. Do you remember the story of David and Goliath? Well, this pandemic is a Goliath to us and an enemy in our path. And David represents what we can do if we have faith in Jesus Christ. Israel and the people of God were set to go to battle against their fierce enemies, the Philistines. The Philistine armies were on the hill on one side of the valley, and the Israelite army was on the other side of the valley. And for many days, both sides were hesitant to begin fighting. Instead of all the armies going to war, there was a custom to send out your best warrior to represent the whole army. Two warriors from each side would fight and the winner would make the whole nation the winner. So the Philistines, they sent out a giant of a man, a trained warrior who stood almost 10 feet tall. His name was Goliath. He was huge and strong. His helmet alone weighed 56 kilos. The Israelites were terrified of him, and no one would go out to fight him. It would be impossible for one man to beat this giant. For 40 days, Goliath challenged them and mocked them. Would this be a time for the Israelites to lose their faith and to give up? 
Well, you know the story well, brothers and sisters. A teenage shepherd boy who was not a soldier, he was a shepherd, and he was sent by his father to deliver food and supplies to the army. He heard Goliath mocking them and challenging them. And David said, who is that Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Let no man's heart fail because of him. I will go and fight the Philistine. And his brother said, what are you doing, David? Are you crazy? Are you an idiot? Go back home. But David did not listen to his brother. And he convinced, he convinced Saul, the leader of the Israeli army, to let him go and fight Goliath. And so they did. They tried to give him some armor, but he refused it. It was too heavy. And he just took his sling and some stones. When Goliath saw David coming, he laughed and made fun of him, and he cursed God. But David said, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come unto thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. And this day the Lord will deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And then David hasted, hasted and ran toward Goliath. He did not walk carefully. He ran toward him with complete faith and courage. And as you know, he took one of the stones in his sling and he smote the giant Philistine in the forehead, killing him dead. Brothers and sisters, I pray we can exercise the faith in Jesus Christ, as did David. As we link arms together and minister to part member families, and as we faithfully pay a full tithe to become a stake of Zion, may we, we remember David, and may we remember the counsel of Helaman the prophet to his sons. He said, and now my sons, remember, remember, that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that, we must, that ye must build your foundation. That when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe because of the rock upon which ye are built which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. I bear testimony that that foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. May we have faith in him. He will never let us down. Of that I testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Naimbag nga aldaw kadakayo kakabsat. Ako po si Elder Saavedra. At ikinagagalak ko po ang araw na ito na makasama kayong lahat sa pagtitipong ito. Datapot ako ay nasa malayong lugar uh, sa Cagayan de Oro City, parte ng Mindanao. Pakiramdam ko, kayo pong lahat ay nasa harap ko. Iti puso kidnapno, iti ragsak kinayat kada kayo amin. Kabayatan ti panang angay iti raytoy nga panagtitipon. Si Papakum Babanak nga nag-agsirbe ken kadwayo uray kadagitoy panawen itirigat. Numan pa'y itilubong kit ad-an, itikumusyon, itipuso kayo kit, saan nga rumbeng agbuteng iti Diyos kit saluwadan na tayo. President Russell M. Nelson so aptly puts it when he said, we live in a day that our forefathers have awaited with anxious expectation. We have front row seats to witness live what the prophet Nephi saw only in a vision, that the power of the Lamb of God would descend upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, and they were armed with righteousness and with power of God in great glory. 
You, my brothers and sisters, are among those men, women, and children whom Nephi saw. Think of that. The power of God propels us to do his work. And what is his work? As our living prophet, President Nelson, declared, the gathering of Israel is the greatest challenge, the greatest cause, and the greatest work on earth today. Addressing the youth years ago, President Nelson defined what gathering of Israel is all about, and that is offering the gospel of Jesus Christ on both sides of the veil. Simply put, the gathering of Israel entails missionary work and temple and family history work. Additionally, it may also mean ministering to our brothers and sisters. The importance of members in this work, particularly in missionary efforts, has always been emphasized. During the 2018 Mission Leadership Seminar, President Nelson explained, your ability to link the enthusiasm of the missionaries with the loving stability and helpful efforts of the members cannot be overemphasized. In fact, your success will be multiplied exponentially as you harness the power of members with whom you serve. Experience has repeatedly shown that higher member engagement in missionary work results in more of God's children being gathered to Israel and more of these converts who remain on the covenant path. Simply stated, conversion and retention improve when members are actively participating in missionary work. The Quorum of the Twelve Apostles has approved guiding principles to help members and missionaries in their efforts to gather Israel consistent with the instruction from the May 26, 2020 letter. Guiding principles. These are outlined by the letters L, S, I. This does not stand for locally stranded individuals. These letters stand for love, share, invite. The first principle is love. And it explained by these words, I love my heavenly father and his son Jesus Christ and feel their love for me. I follow the savior and strive to love my neighbor as he does. I want others to feel the love of heavenly father and Jesus Christ. Indeed, love is the most powerful ingredient that motivates us to do missionary work. And it's the same love that softens the hearts of those whom we teach. This love is wonderfully given to us as Heavenly Father sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Our Savior's birth, His ministry, His sufferings in the Garden of Gethsemane, His death on the cross, and His resurrection are all Heavenly Father's expression of His love for us. The next one is share. As faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, I let His light shine by serving others. I share my time, church resources, and personal experiences to bless my friends and their families. I want them to feel the joy that comes from the Savior, His Gospel, and His Church. When we share what we have to others, especially the happiness that Gospel brings to our lives, it blesses them, and a ray of light shines upon their lives, and they would see clearly and feel deeply that the Gospel of Jesus Christ is true. Lastly, invite. I pray for inspiration and courage to know how to invite my friends to come and see and feel the goodness of the restored gospel and church of Jesus Christ. I invite them to come and help us serve God's children. I invite them to come and belong to his church. Yes, the admonition and invitation leads them to act upon the promptings they receive as they accept our invitations to come and see and to come and help. Those promptings will help them eventually come, stay, and belong. The invitation of one who expresses love and shares the light ensures an abundance of fruits of our labor in his vineyard. During this pandemic, significant adjustments have been made in how missionaries find and teach, especially in their use of technology. These changes enable members to share the gospel in a way that is natural, loving, and with a broader reach. These changes encourage members to invite missionaries to meet with their friends when their friends are ready. Again, to emphasize, 
Members need to adapt to these times by using technology as they work with missionaries, find and teach God's children. What are opportunities for missionary work? Members participate with missionaries in virtual or remote teachings. Members can also use their own social media accounts and partner with missionaries' online finding efforts. Messenger, Facebook, emails, text messages could well be some of this, these platforms where members and missionaries connect with the investigators. The meeting of the minds and hearts through a council is the most important way of obtaining direction, guidance, and revelation in this work. Doctrine and Covenants, section 43, verses 8 to 9, it says, and quote, And now behold, I give unto you a commandment, that when ye are assembled together, ye shall instruct and edify each other, that ye may know how to act and direct my church, how to act upon the points of my law and commandments which I have given. And thus they shall become instructed in the law of my church, and be sanctified by that which you have received. And you shall bind yourselves to act in all holiness before me. The meeting paves the way for instructing and edifying each other, resulting to coming up with things to act upon and committing ourselves to pursue these planned actions. Consistent with the May 21, May 20, 2020 letter of the First Presidency, this is how coordination meeting would look like. The emphasis is a brief informal missionary meeting. As we have learned before, one of the counselors of the Relief Society and Elders Quorum Presidencies take charge of missionary work. Along with ward mission leaders, ward missionaries, and full-time missionaries, they gather together regularly to hold this coordination meeting. Additionally, this discussion group now includes a member of the Young Women Class Presidency, particularly the Older Young Women Class, and a Priest Quorum Assistant. The inclusion of this youth class and quorum leaders significantly improves the hastening of the Lord's work. Why? Youth are more adept in using technology and social media, thus making the work easier as we virtually connect with investigators. The involvement of youth fulfills the invitation of President Nelson to create a youth battalion in gathering Israel. More young people now will be touched by the spirit as they dwell and spend most of their time in social media and via technology. Who would be in the best position to lead in this work through this platform? It is the youth indeed. The Philippines Area Presidency, under the direction of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, introduces a heightened effort whereby the ministering brothers and sisters on one hand and the full-time missionaries on the other perfectly unite their efforts to gather scattered Israel together among part member families. Under the direction of the Area Presidency, Area 70's stake presidents link arms with the mission presidents, bringing the instruction down to the district presidents, bishops, branch presidents, elders quorum presidents, and Relief Society presidents. This paves way the way for the linking of arms between the ministering brothers and sisters and full-time missionaries. The end of the row is blessing the lives of the part member families and bringing them to come unto Christ. I would now review and summarize the linking of arms of the members with full-time missionaries as we minister to part member families. First and foremost, we need to understand that this is an apostolic charge and the Philippines area is uniquely given this charge. The following steps are considered as members and full-time missionaries link arms as they minister to part member families. One, identify. Two, review. Three, assign. Four, extend. Five, counsel. And lastly, minister. First, identify. Bishop identifies all part member families in the ward. Gives this list to the Elders Quorum and Relief Society President. Second, review. Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidents review the list with their counselors. Third, assign. Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidencies prayerfully assign ministering brothers and sisters to all part member families in the ward. 
This might how the assignment, assignment would look like. Missionaries may be assigned to several families and serve with a number of companionships, both with ministering brothers and ministering sisters. In some cases, a family may have two sets of companionship. The ministering brothers may be focusing on an adult male member and ministering sisters may minister to an adult female member. Fourth is extend. The Elders Quorum and Relief Society presidents extend the ministering assignments to the ministering brothers and sisters with the full-time missionaries and ask them to serve together. Fifth, Council. The ministering brothers, full-time missionaries, and ministering sisters, full-time missionaries' companionships counsel together and discuss what they know about the families. Sixth, minister. The ministering brothers and sisters in companionship with the full-time missionaries minister to the assigned part member families in person or virtually. Here are some important things to consider as we take part of this work. This linking of arms for part members, families, do, does not change the ministering that we have been doing. Ministering should continue regularly or as often as needed. Elders can be companions with ministering sisters or sister missionaries with ministering brothers, provided they don't travel together. They meet at the members' homes. Ministering brothers and sisters take the lead. Full-time missionaries support and help organize meetings using technology. Missionary companionship should never be divided. Full-time missionaries can be assigned to many companionships and more families. Members work with missionaries as they use new methods of doing missionary work by applying technology and various social media platforms. To summarize, as members and full-time missionaries link arms to minister to part member families, we take the following steps. First, Bishop identifies the part member families and give the list to the Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidents. Two, Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidencies review this list. Three, Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidencies prayerfully assign the ministering brothers and sisters to these part member, member families. Fourth, the Relief Society and Elders Quorum, quorum Presidents meet with an we meet with and extend these assignments to the ministering brothers and sisters together with the full-time missionaries. Fifth, the ministering brothers and sisters with full-time missionaries meet and counsel together. And sixth, the ministering brothers and sisters with full-time missionaries minister to their assigned families. I invite all of you brothers and sisters who have been given the charge and trust to give it to this clarion call to do his will. As we contemplate on how to let God prevail in our lives, may we consider our ways and ponder these questions individually and as a counsel. What have I learned? How am I going to teach? What will I do? What will I do different, differently this time? As members and missionaries become one in their efforts to gather Israel, more of God's children will come unto Christ. I bear witness that this great work is God's work to gather Israel in these latter days. The gospel will sweep the earth as with a flood. I bear witness that this great work is God's work. He will gather us all under his wings. His gospel is a gospel of love. His plan is a plan of happiness for all eternity and for all those who hear his voice and follow, follow his words. I testify that Jesus Christ is our Redeemer and our Savior. Heavenly Father lives and loves us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. District Conference na kita pun mengenai hati. Terima kasih.
Dan kok kami bisa mengambil azim sengah ini Bilainya pesan minarab arab At nopo pesan lambat Dan kok kami bisa gaidan senang ngurikus Bawa di sesamin At Kok pesan lambat dan kok kami bisa Saat orang yang sakit bayi sengah kok At Kok pesan lambat dan kok kami nam Semangat Leaders na sila po yung gumagabay sa amin At Inihiling po namin na sana patawarin niyo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan At Sana po na safe po kami lagi At tutulang po yung aking, aking inihiling At inihiling po sa pangalan na si Kristo Amen